After the six week building period, you will need to ship your robot away before the competition. Of course, your robot will need to be transported safely. So, you will need to build a crate. Here's what you need. Four 3 8 inch standard plywood sheets and one half inch standard plywood sheet, which should all be four by eight feet. You'll also need seven pieces of standard lumber, one four by four piece that is eight feet long and six two by two pieces that are 12 feet long. To attach these, you'll need about 50 quarter 20 carriage bolts that are four inches long and 50 quarter 20 wing nuts. You'll also need two one pound boxes of one and one quarter inch standard deck screws and one one pound box of two and one half inch standard deck screws. You'll also need one roll of clear stretch wrap. For tools, you'll need one of the following, a table saw, a jigsaw, or a circular saw. You'll also need a power drill with a quarter inch drill bit, a Phillips screwdriver bit, and a hammer or mallet. Make sure you have your safety goggles, then get ready to work. First, measure out your pieces of plywood and lumber before you cut. Try to use as much wood as possible by cutting out different lengths from each piece. You should have six pieces of plywood and 14 pieces of lumber. Out of the 3 8 inch plywood, you'll need to cut four pieces of plywood two of piece A and two of piece B. The two A pieces should be 40 and a half by 64 inches and the two B pieces should each be 46 by 64 inches. Out of the half inch plywood, measure two pieces which are 44 by 46 inches. These are your C pieces. The lumber should be measured out into 12 pieces. The two by two pieces should make four D pieces that are 37 and a half inches long, two E pieces that are 40 and a half inches long, four F pieces that are 46 inches long, and four G pieces that are 61 inches. The four by four lumber should be cut into two H pieces that are each 46 inches long. On the floor, create a frame using the two G pieces and the two E pieces on the end like this. Center the D piece in between the two G pieces. Secure the lumber at each joint with two inch deck screws. You'll want to drill pilot holes to avoid splitting the wood. Use a 1 8 inch drill bit to do this. Now flip the frame over. Since you created the frame on the floor, the pieces will be flush. Now attach plywood piece A to the frame. You can secure plywood piece A with one inch deck screws about every foot. Do the same with the other plywood piece A. Lay the two F pieces on the floor like this and place plywood piece B on top. Secure plywood piece B using one inch deck screws. Repeat this process with the other plywood piece B. two H pieces 30 inches apart on the floor like this and then place plywood piece C on top. This piece forms your base, so the placement of the H pieces this far apart ensures that the weight of the crate is supported properly and also allows for the forklift to pick it up. Now, screw plywood piece C on top using one inch deck screws. Save the other C piece to use as the lid of your crate. Place the C base piece and one of the B pieces on their side like this so that their edges meet. Drill four quarter inch holes. Make sure that the holes are evenly spaced. After you drill each hole, insert a carriage bolt through the hole and secure it with wing nuts on the other side of the lumber. The carriage bolt head should be against the plywood, not against the lumber. Now roll over your structure so that piece B is flat on the floor like this. Now bring in piece A and place it as you place piece B in the last step. This time, drill three one quarter inch holes, securing each hole with the carriage nut and bolt after you drill it. After you've finished screwing in side A, tilt the crate up so that it's on its base. Now, attach side A and side B. Drill six one quarter inch holes evenly along the length of G. As we've been doing through this whole tutorial, make sure that you insert the carriage bolts as you're drilling the holes. Again, make sure that the carriage bolt heads are flat against the plywood, not against the lumber. Now, you will have to repeat these steps with the other side A and the other side B. 
Make sure that you tilt the crate so that you can attach each piece to the base. Finally, tilt your crate over and attach the remaining side seat. Don't forget to put a bolt in after you've drilled each hole. When you're done, we recommend labeling each side on the edge so you know what piece goes where. The bolt holes that you've drilled are unique, so you'll only be able to assemble your crate in one way. By removing the carriage bolts and wing nuts, you can take off one of the B sides like a door and put your robot inside. Make sure that your robot doesn't have any loose parts or batteries that could fly around inside. When you're actually ready to ship your robot, take your stretch wrap and circle it a few times around the crate. You don't need to wrap the whole crate, so don't overdo it, but feel free to go around a few times. Now your crate is finished and you're ready to ship. We'll see you at the competition.